This right here is the new MSI Claw 8 AI Plus. It's a gaming handheld that we're also advertising as a mini PC. So what I really want to check out is how good is the experience when it comes to editing, photos, and Lightroom on this device. One thing that I'm always trying to figure out is, is there a way that I can decrease the amount of gear and the weight that I carry with me when I travel? And one of the areas is the computer or laptop itself. Normally, I travel with a 16-inch laptop. This one is the Creator 16 AI Studio. And as you can see, the footprint of the Claw 8 in comparison with the Creator 16 AI Studio is a lot smaller, even though the Claw 8 might be a little bit thicker in comparison to the, to the laptop. Now for the smaller size, it is a trade-off. There is some compromises. In a laptop chassis, I'm gonna get more powerful hardware performance such as a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 laptop GPU. But with that amount of hardware, it involves a lot more cooling and so you have a lot more weight. With the Claw 8 AI Plus, I'm getting just integrated graphics on the Lunar Lake CPU that's inside this machine. Generally speaking, for editing photos inside Lightroom, it's not super resource intensive, so the Claw 8 can handle it just fine. Usually when I'm on a flight and if I do want to get some photo editing done, there's not a lot of space between myself and the seat in front of me, so usually what ends up happening is I'll have the laptop in this V shape right in front of me and I'll try to do whatever editing that I can while in this very cramped position trying to get the laptop to fit properly whereas with this it's a lot smaller I could see myself comfortably using this Claw 8 uh, in, a, in an airplane to do some quick edits. While I don't think it's practical to bring a Bluetooth keyboard to pair with a Claw 8 while you travel, I do think it's absolutely necessary to have a Bluetooth mouse to pair with a Claw to do your edits. The reason why I say it's necessary to have a Bluetooth mouse is because while you can control the cursor with the left joystick, it's not very precise and if you want to do small movements, it's a little bit difficult. I think you could get used to it, but for me, I haven't found it to be super accurate. Alternatively, I could use the touch display and use my finger to navigate through and adjust the sliders, which actually does pretty well, but once I get to the curve of the image that I want to edit, uh, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you can tap on the curve to add points to the curve itself. Typically on a mouse you would left click and hold the point and drag it around. But when you tap and hold on the screen itself, the display recognizes it as a right click. So it's a little bit challenging and frustrating to try to adjust this curve using uh, touch controls. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that if you're going to edit photos on the Claw 8 to pair it with a Bluetooth mouse. Another thing that I've been utilizing is macro keys that are found on the back of the Claw 8. So I sometimes find myself needing to access a virtual keyboard, typically to undo some adjustments that I've made. While I could technically swipe up on the bottom and click this icon to bring up the keyboard here, it just, it's a little bit inconvenient because now I have to tap away from the screen, from the start menu, because when you swipe up, it automatically opens the start menu. To, so I need to tap away, get back into Lightroom to perform any edits. And it's just slightly inconvenient. So that's one swipe, one tap, another tap. And then when you tap back into the program itself, if you tap on anything else, it might make some adjustments. There's something built in called the combination keys inside MSI Center M. So if I go into desktop mode or operations, there's combination keys right there. You can switch between macro keys and combination keys, but uh, for the first one, virtual keyboard, you can push M1 or M2 and then up on the D-pad. That'll open up a virtual keyboard. That is different than the one uh, that you get from tapping this keyboard down here. So when I push and hold the back and the up on the D-pad to pull up this on-screen keyboard, it's actually less obtrusive and less obstructive compared to the other one. And I can click on the keys that I need to perform whatever action. I can also use my fingers to control this on-screen keyboard as well, if I really needed to. But I just found that pulling up this on-screen keyboard using the combination keys was a lot more convenient. Overall, when I'm going through and adjusting the sliders, there's not a lot of lag. One thing I want to also point out is that in my own experience editing on Lightroom and when I swapped it down to eight watts, it still works 
pretty snappy and pretty quickly. As I'm making these extreme adjustments, there's not really all that much lag. This way I'm able to edit photos for longer on the Claw 8, especially if I'm nowhere near a power plug and uh, have no access to charge the Claw 8 itself. Right now I just asked it to export 200 photos that I imported directly into Lightroom Cloud on this device itself and it's currently at 23, 24 out of 200. So it's maybe taking about one to two seconds per photo to export. I think it's really, really not bad of a trade-off. So smaller size compared to the laptop, still exporting decently fast. And uh, it's the system's not frozen, Lightroom's not frozen, Windows not frozen, and it's, it's still exporting. Now it's currently at 50 out of 200. So. Overall, I think this is a viable alternative to editing photos with, uh, especially when traveling, instead of a 16 inch laptop. So it's a lot lighter, it's a lot smaller. I do wanna take this out and try it in the real world just to see how it performs. But having this weird hybrid control, I think is really not that bad of an experience. And the way that I also see it is this will save me some weight or it will free up some space where I could bring either other stuff or just take some weight off of my back. So um, I think it could be a good trade off. I just need to actually put it in use and see what it's actually like. Of course, once I'm either done editing or if I get tired of editing, I want to take a break. I could just switch back over to what this handheld was designed for primarily and that's gaming on the go. That's gonna be it for this video. In the next one, I'm gonna throw some 4K 10-bit 422 footage at the Claw 8 just to see how well it can handle it. So if you'd like to see that, feel free to subscribe, like, dislike, and I'll see you in the next video.